Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic, and I remember it so you don't have to. Folks, why is it movies based on video games always seem to suck monkey tits? I mean, think about it. Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, Super Mario Brothers, even films like The Wizard that just talked about video games always seem to suck. For whatever reason, they're certainly not getting any better. Don't believe me? Then check out the festering elephant puke that Hollywood seems to have entitled Double Drank. A movie so bad that I can't even come up with a clever analogy to properly describe how bad it is. Well, I'll try. It's the most shit-smacking, heart-eating, disgusting piece of retro ass I've ever seen in my entire life! No. That still doesn't seem to sum up how bad it is! But hell, anyone can talk about it. It's quite a different thing to actually experience it. So, let's take a gander. First of all, a little history. Double Dragon was an arcade game in the 80s that was a simple side-scroller beat-em-up adventure. Nothing too complicated, just beating the shit out of any annoying punk who crossed your path. God bless senseless violence. The game was so popular that they also made a Nintendo version, which is one of the highest grossing games for the NES. With the game so popular, Hollywood producers quickly put their minds together and came up with the idea to make a movie about it. Seven years later. I mean, come on, by this time you could get Double Dragon in toy dispensers. It's not like this was at the height of its popularity. But oh well, maybe the idea for the movie was just so good that it could cross the boundaries of the zeitgeist and give us one hell of a timeless classic. But I really doubt it. So the film starts off with this bullshit. Thousands of years ago, an evil army of shadow warriors terrorized the great city of Changsha. The good king sacrificed himself to create a mystical medallion. The king split it in half. This is the legend of the Double Dragon. No, this is the plot to Surf Ninjas. I love how they identify the location just by saying somewhere in China, like no one actually wanted to do research about where this shitty ass movie took place. Where's this all happening? Uh, somewhere in China. So we see a bunch of ninjas beating the crap out of a bunch of Chinese monks as one of them hides in a cave where they worship the yogurt statue from Spaceballs. Pilots! It turns out the monk was going for the Double Dragon Medallion, but it's taken away from him by the sadistic, sinister, slimy, hottest ninja I've ever seen in my life. She takes the medallion back to Robert Patrick, who plays the Vanilla Ice 1000. It turns out he is the evil ruler of New Angeles, which takes place in the futuristic world of 2007. Oh yeah, I remember that year, when global warming flooded the entire Earth, nuclear missiles destroyed all the major cities, and then within one year's time, we cleaned it all up! Funny couple of months! I wrote a lot in my calendar those days, I can tell ya! So it turns out that New Angeles is a crime-ridden hellhole where earthquakes occur every couple of seconds, criminals rule the streets, and the police never come out after dark. How's it any different from the old Angeles? In the city, we meet the Lee brothers, Jimmy and Bill. They meet every Wednesday at the Karate Kid Reenactment Guild, where they practice their infamous karate moves. Like the fire-blazing dropkick, the fearsome raging roundhouse, and the fatal demon head nookie of doom! It's a terrifying world where criminals wave their fingers at you, little people do whatever the hell this is, and news programs are hosted by George Hamilton and Vanna White. Wait, what? I always get them mixed up, whether to go forward or backward. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, Vanna. Did you just randomly flip through a phone book and land your finger on some celebrity's name? I mean, what the hell? George Hamilton and Vanna White? Why? There's no point. They have no connection whatsoever. I mean, what's next? Andy Dick is the weatherman? Oh, boy, you two are crazy. What is this? The film version of Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon? Madonna's in the news. She held a press conference in Old York today where she said her marriage to Tom Arnold is finished. Ah, yes. Don't you just love those timeless jokes that will never become dated? Madonna and Tom Arnold. God, it's like their sensitive writing skills can see into the future. So after that bit of non-sequitur theater, we watch as Jimmy and Billy pick up their random Asian friend, Satori, but get pulled over by an evil gang known as the Mohawks. By the way, to all those morons who are trying to bring this look back, just remember, this could be you. Bill does a quick file check on the gang's leader. <laughs> Moby Dick over there is Bo Abobo. Oh, I'm sorry, but, um, what was up with that mugshot? <laughs> Is that just the new format? Making all criminals honk like a goose? I mean, what's the point? Imagine if I had a mugshot like that! 
people are on the hunt for a big shot in the Gambino crime family who even John Gotti feared. When our 1,000 capture special returns to stay with us. So the Blowhawks chase our heroes down all throughout the streets of New Angeles. Look at this car, not one thing about it is original. It's got the fire engine from the Batmobile, the computer from Knight Rider, the design of the Ghostbusters car, and it even runs on Mr. Fusion from Back to the Future. Why don't you just throw in the HAL 9000 while you're at it? Can you get us going any faster? I'm sorry, Dave, but you're completely hosed. Oh, I get it. Ugly. Ugly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a compilement of random violence. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, these guys will laugh at anything. Hey, next week I'm getting a root canal. <laughs> hey, I just found out I have cancer. <laughs> I think my favorite scene is when the heroes use a map to black out the Mohawk's vision. So what do they do? They use a teletracker camera to send a virtual reality simulation into their car so they can use an alternative way of steering. That's a really clever idea, guys. Really top notch. But did you ever consider the possibility of maybe just simply removing the map with your fucking hand? I mean, what? There's no windshield technology in the future anymore? I mean, it'd be easier just to build a robotic arm to come out and remove the map for you. But what do you expect when you're using this high-tech 2007 technology? So our heroes get stuck at a dead end where it looks like the Mohawks have the advantage. But another gang called the Power Corps protects them as their gang leader, who I think is skipping grade school to be in this movie, tells the Mohawks to piss off. No one interrupts our street rendition of Godspell. So our heroes return to their home at an old abandoned theater, where Satori tells the two boys about the medallion she keeps around her neck that apparently the boy's father gave to her. Your father was in the excavation when it collapsed. He gave this to me in Changsha, with a warning. He said the mystical powers of the dragon are far too dangerous for one person to possess. Wasn't the original plot Double Dragon? Someone punches a chick in the stomach and two guys have to go rescue her? What, was that story just too complex for the writers to figure out? Meanwhile, we see that the Mohawk's leader, Boa Bobo, yes, that is his real name, is working for the Vanilla Ice 1000, who wishes to get the other half of the Double Dragon medallion. He's joined by two Mexican bellhops and dominatrix Barbie, who help him in his evil plan by visiting the Lee brothers' home. Oh good! Punch her in the stomach and take her away, will ya? We're trying to get this movie off the ground! Geisman. No one has called me Geisman in many years. But like a phoenix rising from the ashes. You're incredibly flaming? I have ascended. Is that code for coming out of the closet? So they all have a nice big chase in the abandoned theater where they perform some incredible stunt scenes that Indiana Jones wishes he could imitate. I always love how small round objects always seem to have mystical ass kicking powers in these movies. Wouldn't they just walk over them? What a head case. What a head case? Oh come on, there's about a million other bad puns you could throw in this fight scene. It's curtains for you. May I sweep you off your feet? Balls in your court. It's time to get pinned. God, even their bad dialogue is bad. I know logically that means that it should be good, but it's not. It's still bad. In the middle of this fight scene, the Ice 1000 explains his evil plan. Forgetting that when you turn your back, it gives the enemy ample time to hurt you. Wait a minute, did he just jump through the same painting twice? Okay, I guess part of the Double Dragon special power is art restoration. Things heat up when the gang leader Abobo gets an upgrade as transformed into Fat Bastard's retarded, pimple-covered cousin. Get in my belly! This giant, powerful, unstoppable monster is defeated by a punching bag. Okay. But the Ice 1000 has used his mystical powers to trap Satori and burn down the theater. You gotta get Satori free! Oh jeez, what will MacGyver do in this situation? Well, he would use the curtain in the back to tie together a couple of sandbags and would level out the weight on the other side of the... Or he would just kick the door down. So seriously, they've shown off their fight moves, they've shown Vanilla Ice can turn into a shadow puppet. But when is the story gonna begin? When are they gonna kidnap the woman and take her away like in the game? I'm sick of your stalling movie. It's time that you do something with that woman. Do something with that woman! Well, that was... harsh. Alas, poor Satori. I hardly knew her. Seriously, I have no idea who she was. Was she their sister, their mother, their friend? What? 
Well, she's just a smear of ash on the sidewalk now, as the two brothers try to continue on protecting the medallion without her. Jimmy, she has gone. Get over it! The has gone and there's nothing we can do to bring her back. But she should have told us about the dragon a long time ago. She dunked the whole thing on us as usual. Boy, I hope he didn't write her a eulogy. Unfortunately, they come across another gang who, of course, want to beat the crap out of them. They have to fight evil nasties like a Robin Williams mind. No, 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 no! A yodeling boy in later hosen. Yodeling he Rick James. I'm Rick James Beyond! And of course, the sinister postman who randomly leaps off a tall buildings for no reason. Special delivery! Maybe this wasn't such a hot idea! <laughs> Did the music just belch? <laughs> God, even the musical score can't keep its lunch down watching this! Is it me, or are all these gangs starting to look like Halloween costume rejects? I keep expecting to see Mickey Mouse at any moment. Haha! <laughs> Go for the jugular! Next, they get on a speedboat and race across the river. Yeah, remember that from the game? How about the Hollywood tour boat that blocks their way? Remember that from the game? And to your right, you'll see a shitty movie being made. So their boat blows up, of course not leaving a scratch on them, and they try to figure out whether or not they should go to the Power Core gang to ask for help. We need help. I'm not gonna ask Marion for help. Fine, then I'll ask her. Good, then ask her. I'm gonna. Ask her. I'm gonna. Oh, will you just propose to him already? <laughs> Meanwhile, the two Mexican bellhops, after filming a double mint gum commercial, reveal that they lost the location of the Lee brothers. But Ice takes it well. I just want total domination of one major American city! <sighs> Alright. Of course! <laughs> I'll never get sick of that joke. So the Lee brothers find the location of a power core, only to find out it's not quite as menacing as they thought it would be. Welcome to Chuck E. Cheese, asshole. Kids! It turns out that power core is just kids. But on the bright side, they did manage to capture the villain's assistant, Abobo, subjecting him to the horrible torture of... feeding him spinach? My special spinach mm. diet. This is like waterboarding by Popeye. Neil, yeah, we're gonna have to give up some of our personal freedoms. But the Ice 1000 breaks into Willy Wonka's torture asylum and tries to get back his half of the medallion. This should be suspenseful, but I can't tell which gang members are supposed to be which. These morons are just one Indian short of the village people. There's one scene where Power Core's leader is confronted by Dominatrix Barbie. Now the box. Oh boy, this is gonna be hot. Damn it, man! You ruined my hot girl on girl action! I guess we do get a scene where she ties you to a pole with her own whip phone. We're lucky. Generally, I put people in the hospital. Yes, yes. Now cover her in whipped cream and maple syrup. Then dress her up in a sailor's uniform, place her in some clown makeup, make her prance around singing on the good ship lollipop, and then... Wow, I have issues. But the Ice 1000 comes in and possesses Bill's brother, Jimmy. He raises his hands, which somehow silences the chaotic mob, and challenges Billy to either hand over the medallion or watch his brother die. So Billy backs him off into a corner where he threatens to- WAIT A MINUTE! <laughs> the Double Dragon arcade game is right behind him? THAT MAKES NO SENSE! HOW CAN YOU MAKE A DOUBLE DRAGON ARCADE GAME MOVIE BASED ON THE DOUBLE DRAGON ARCADE GAME IF THE ARCADE GAME IS IN THE BACKGROUND?! HAS EVERYBODY LOST THEIR MINDS?! IT'S LIKE SEEING FRODO IN J.R.R. Tolkien's LORD OF THE RINGS MOVIES READING THE BOOK J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings! It makes no sense! The movie's universe should have just imploded! They're just moseying along, saying their dialogue until... <laughs> so it turns out they destroy the game, no doubt an obvious metaphor, and manage to get the villain out of Jimmy's body. Thanks, bro. You gave me back my dignity to do Iron Chef America. But the villain, looking nothing like the Team 1000 here, now has both halves of the medallion, giving him the incredible ability to turn into... these two guys. That's a pretty lame medallion. But of course, the heroes get the medallion back by doing a ballerina spin and put it together to become powerful themselves. Didn't I see the Wonder Twins do this once? Wonder Twin powers activate! And so they transform themselves into the fearsome duo of... Siegfried and Roy? Destiny has brought together the double dragons. Guard them, as I guarded you. Oh, hey, thanks, motherly, sisterish acquaintance. So they defeat the villain, he gets dragged off to jail, and he makes his big sinister revenge speech at the end. You think I'm bad? Where do you meet my lawyers? <laughs> Robert Patrick, everybody!
but it's all the magic boy, I tell you. That kid is going places. Bottom line, this movie is horrible. It's about as entertaining as colon cancer. No one in the right mind should, would, or could like this movie. <sighs> Maybe this is the time that filmmakers will wake up and realize that they have to work hard in order to make movies about video games interesting. You can't just make crap and expect it to be good. In fact, I think now is the time that filmmakers may stop worrying about money and simply concentrate on making decent, entertaining films about video games. May God strike me down if I'm wrong. Is it me or have I been dying a lot recently?